If you've played Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, you've probably heard this before. This is what happens when you pick up something. But is it possible to beat the game without picking up anything? No, I mean, surely you need to pick up something, right? Right? Yes! The rules for this challenge are very simple. I'm not allowed to pick up armor, bows, shields, weapons, materials, food, or Zonai capsules. That leaves us with just the key items category. Is that really enough to beat all of Tears of the Kingdom? Yes. Before we hop into the story, I want to quickly say thank you to everyone on this list. You guys made this possible. With that being said, this is the story of how I beat Tears of the Kingdom with nothing. Starting the game, we're under Hyrule Castle with the Master Sword. Our inventory is locked in this section and there's nothing to pick up anyway, so let's continue down the cave. How does Ganon sleep like that? Hello. And there goes the only weapon we'll ever have. After a nice little nap, he awakens in the Room of Awakening. How fitting. Anyway, we've arrived at our first problem. You're meant to pick up the broken Master Sword and use it to cut the vines. But doing that would instantly violate the rules before we even really got started. And there's no other exit. The vine door is the only way out. So that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed. Just kidding. There's a glitch for this. It's called juggling, and it's a large part of what makes this challenge even possible in the first place. So pay attention for this part. First, we're going to make a manual save right here. This is our clean save, meaning this save hasn't picked up any items yet. Now we're going to pick up the Master Sword and progress like a casual playthrough until we find a torch. Once we have the torch, we can light it and zuggle it. I like to think of this glitz as super gluing something to your hand. In fact, it's so super glued that it stays with them through saves. I'm gonna draw this out because time travel gets really confusing. The black line represents us playing the game. Let's say this is our manual save. Now we pick up the master sword and the save is now dirty, so it's red. We progress this dirty save until we get a torch. Now we glitch out the torch so that we can bring it back to our old manual save. This creates a new timeline where we can burn the vines with our torch. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, you see that? You see that? Oh, that's a good feeling. And yeah, like you might think, oh, I have a weapon now. I have a torch, right? I'm spamming Y. And if you look at my inventory, look at this. If I click L, it's all blank. Like I don't have anything to the left of system. Since the torch is in a glitch state, it doesn't actually let me swing. If I try to attack, we'll just pull out nothing. So even if I brought in a really powerful weapon, it wouldn't matter. Also, I can't drop it. So it's staying with us through every cutscene. What the hell? This is our first key item, the pure pad. Now that we have this, we can do the four shrines around the Great Sky Island. Ascend is going to be tricky since we don't have any food or armor, so let's save that for last. Let's go to Ultra Hand first. Ultra Hand is a key item ability that lets you move objects around. Okay, I don't think Ultra Hand's going to be a problem. It wasn't, because Ultra Hand doesn't rely on anything in your inventory. Unlike some runes. Anyway, we beat the shrine and we're moving on to Fuse. Spirit Orb. Key item. Key item. Things were feeling pretty good so far, but we were about to hit a big stone wall. No, literally. Oh god, I forgot there's a wall. Oh no, and I can't pick up the sword to break it. Oh boy. What if I try to use the rock to like smash it? The intended solution is to pick up a sword and fuse a boulder to it to break the wall. But of course, we don't have anything to fuse to. So I was kind of stumped for a little bit. But then someone in my chat had a brilliant idea. Put all rocks together and build- Oh, build a ladder. Yes. Can we climb these? Please tell me we can climb these. Oh, we can climb them. Yes. Okay, okay. It's kind of a miracle that Nintendo put not one, not two, but three boulders in this shrine, because if there was any less, we wouldn't be able to get over this wall. My excitement was pretty short-lived, though, because next we came across a locked door which required a key, and the chest that holds the key is super high up, so high that my boulder ladder wasn't even close to high enough to reach it. Oh my god, it's still so much higher. And the only other things in the room were fire fruits and a wooden bow. It seemed useless. I tried to ultra hand the fire fruit on top of the ladder, and then and drop it up, but it still wasn't even high enough. No, it doesn't reach. And then I had the idea of lighting the wooden bow with the torch and then trying to bring it up, but it would break before I even got it there. And then I realized something. Both of these solutions don't work on their own, but if we combined them, we could light the wooden bow on top of the boulder ladder and then ultra hand it up to burn the wood. Okay, it's on fire. Quickly, quickly, quick. Get it up, get it up, get it up. Yes, yes. It's burning, it's burning. And just in case it's not obvious enough, yeah, the key is a key item. And now with Bob the boulder ladder and our key, we can head through the door and... Anyway, that's when I realized I could smash enemies with the rocks. Pretty cool, huh? No, not cool, because that means every time I want to kill an enemy, I need to go find a boulder, grab it, bring it back to the enemy, crush him, and if I die along the process, the boulder's gone forever. It freaking sucks. It's not fun. Shh, it's not fun. Settle down, settle down. I'm sure you'll find something better later on. Remember, you're still at the start of the game, man. So at this point, a lot of people were getting confused by the torch in my hand, so I remembered a way we could actually get rid of it. You know what I could do, actually, to get rid of the torch? If I reset my game, we would get rid of the torch. I was about to close the game, but chat begged me to keep the torch. Burritos, keep the torch, keep the torch, it got you this far, don't let it go. Burritos, the torch is your best friend. It was getting parasocial with this torch, but hey, we kept him and gave him a name. 
Todd the torch. Look, I love the torch. Maybe we should keep them. If, if the torch catches on fire here, then we're good. Okay, man, wait, this is actually great for us. Oh, wait, what? It stays on fire while I'm running? What? Does it stay on fire while I'm climbing? <gasps> oh my, this is a very handy torch. It just always stays on fire. I was so naive. I was about to get rid of them, but you know, we love Todd now. The beautiful thing about having a permanent fire torch is not that it does damage. The damage is terrible, but it does emit a constant heat warming effect to Link. So we can actually get to ascend now. To absolutely nobody's surprise, this shrine gives you the ability to, well, ascend. The only kind of challenge was cutting these ropes, but our torch can burn them and this guy can shoot them, so we're chilling. Then we finish up the ascend shrine and make our way back to the Temple of Time, where Zelda's like, yo, here's another useless ass ability that we're never gonna use because it does no damage. I love that. Thank you, Zelda. Anyway, Raru teaches us how to use this last TP command, and we do another boring ass shrine where there's nothing difficult about it. We yoink another spirit orb, go back to the Temple of Time, turn in our spirit orbs, get a heart container, and oh shit, we beat the Great Sky Island? Now, before we leave the Great Sky Island, let's see what happens when we do the final cutscene where you're supposed to have the broken Master Sword. Because remember, we never actually picked it up. Oh, the Master Sword's on my back now, even though I never picked it up. This would be so funny if Zelda picks up the torch. That is a perfectly good sword right there. It's still there. <laughs> Zelda's picking up the torch. Yes. So we just scammed Zelda and gave her a torch instead of a Master Sword to heal. I wonder how this is going to affect the end game. Anyway, we just beat the Great Sky Island in, wow, only an hour. This challenge is going to be a piece of- Obviously, I didn't want to just do the tutorial island. I want a real challenge, but I can't just beeline it to the end. I have no damage. Unless... We could use the sages to deal damage for us. Sages are like little minions that stick by your side and have different abilities, which can deal damage. They're also key items, so it's fair game. Awesome, so we can just grab some sages, have them fight our battles for us, and whoop de doo we beat the game, right? It's so easy, it's so easy. The sages aren't in like some chest or something. You have to beat their entire dungeon and beating a whole dungeon with no items seems crazy. So let's lay this out. There's five dungeons. Water temple, fire temple, wind temple, lightning temple, and spirit temple. Let's organize these. The water temple requires you to pick up king scales and shoot one with a bow and arrow. I also have no way to activate Sidon's ability without attacking, so I couldn't beat the boss. Water temple's a dud. The lightning temple also requires a bow and arrow to shoot these dummies with Riju's lightning ability. So that one's not gonna work either. Fire Temple also wouldn't work because it takes place in an environment where we would literally burn alive without picking up flame armor or flame resistant food. Or a ton of fairies, I guess, but you know, that's not a key item. That only leaves us with Wind Temple and Spirit Temple. The Wind Temple seemed impossible at first because of the cold, but remember, we have a broken torch constantly keeping us warm, so it gave me hope. I decided that that's where we're gonna try to go to first. But before we headed over there, I wanted to pick up a really important key item. The paraglider is a key item, and it's also super essential for completing the Wind Temple, which is where we're going now. We're either gonna die from cold or we're gonna survive because the torch is gonna save our lives. Keep me warm, Todd, keep me warm. <gasps> yes. As I predicted, the torch still kept us warm, which meant we had nothing stopping us from just heading over to Rito Village. We reach Rito Village and we're told that Tulin, the Sage of Wind, was not there and we need to go find him. Tulin, please be here, bro. No, <laughs> why was that fair, dude? Okay, that, that spawn is actually really nice. That is a very, no, but I lost my, lost my fire. Trying to do my job. Right, Siri. I don't I don't care, Siri. I don't care. I really don't. And so we arrive at the problem. The issue is that an Aracuda, one of these flying enemies, steals Tulin's bow, and we need to kill that Aracuda so that we can get Tulin's bow back. Now this Aracuda is kind of unique from other Aracudas. This one never swoops down to attack Link, and instead is programmed to just keep circling the platform high above the ground. I tried ultra handing items up to him, but they wouldn't deal any damage. I tried getting as much height as I could and jumping, but nowhere was high enough to reach him, and going too far away would cause the mission to be abandoned. All I had to work with was a few wooden boxes, barrels, and Todd. Luckily, European Apple had a really clever idea to fix this problem. Stack every Everything into one tall tower, then recall lock it and ascend through it to the top. Since your torch is technically on fire and Aracuda die in one hit, if you could jump off the tower and get the torch to hit the Aracuda, it may die. Subscribe. <gasps> oh my god! Wait, did that work? Yes! Oh my god, that worked! <laughs> what? Holy shit, that worked! Oh, fellas, I was genuinely so happy at this moment because all I could think about is that Wind Temple is possible, I think. The Colgara boss fight's gonna be interesting. What are you doing? 
No! What are you doing? The next part of the quest is to go to the source of the blizzard, and wow, surprise, surprise, it's a dungeon. Getting up there wasn't too bad, because we could still use our paraglider and two lens wind ability. But about halfway up, I made a dark realization. Oh no. We have another problem. I don't think I can even activate Zona devices. You can only turn on Zona devices by attacking them or shooting them with an arrow. Enemies hitting it doesn't turn it on, and Tulin hitting it also doesn't work. So even though I have the battery so as a key item, I can't even use it. This is going to be a massive problem later, but right now Todd saves us again. Todd is goaded. Pretty soon after that, we made it to the dungeon and there's this weird dude that keeps on saying, oh. Nintendo, word choice. The dungeon was pretty tricky with no items, but also pretty boring, so let's skip to the boss. Let's go! Hey, let's go! The torch is with us, dude! The torch never leaves! Just kidding, I'm going to precisely explain the stupidest and most boring puzzle of them all. I'm gonna call this puzzle hate, because I hate it. It's blocked off by this door, which opens if you put an icicle connecting this cog to this cog. Seems simple. I mean, look at all the icicles hanging right next to it. We just need to suit one down, and we don't have a bow. We just need to slice one off, and we don't have a sword. The only icicles I could grab were at the top of the dungeon, and the puzzle's down here at the bottom, so I had to grab them up here, throw them off of the side of the ship, then get linked down to the puzzle, recall it back up, ultra-handed, put it into the cogs, and if it got too close to me, my torch would burn it. It's not long enough. No, not even close to long enough. There's a dick joke here. I'm not gonna make it. Beautiful. That is a thick boy. Yes! There we go, boys. Now, after completing all the terminals, we're of course met with everyone's favorite boss, Pogera. Oh, I love that music. I love it. Keep playing it a little bit longer. Okay, let's move on. We have no bow. We have no arrows. All we have is a dream. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, that thing one shots? Okay. Just dodge all these and dive. There we go. Look at that damage. Sweet. Phase one done. Oh, it's real close. It's real close. No, no. Dude, like, how do you get around that? I wasn't great at the tornadoes. Two ones the only stage that matters anyway. Oh, no, 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 no. No. No! No tornadoes, no tornadoes, no tornadoes, no tornadoes. Please, no tornadoes. No! What are you doing? No! What are you doing? I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. No! I'm not gonna make it, dude. I'm not gonna make it. Go! Yes! Get your ugly ass out of here, boy! Her container. This is also not an item. Demon King? Secret stone? Dude, I love it's us three. Yo, Todd's part of it. Todd's part of it. Oh, that fire is real close to your head, bro. Maybe back your head up a little bit. Oh, I love Todd. So we actually beat the Wind Temple completely itemless, and we actually did it all thanks to Todd. His warmth kept us through the entire dungeon without freezing to death. So naturally, it got me thinking, could we do the same thing but on the opposite end for Fire Temple? Imagine this, this red lollipop represents Todd because it's red and Todd's on fire. But instead of using fire, what if we used a sapphire? If you didn't know, sapphires keep you cold in hot climates. So could this keep us from burning alive and make Fire Temple possible? Well, it turns out I was right. I could fuse a sapphire to the torch and then juggle that into the clean save, which would keep us cool in hot climates. But the Fire Temple isn't a hot climate. It's a burning wasteland full of magma and lava. There's no amount of sapphires that are gonna keep them from burning alive. The other issue with Fire Temple is even if I could get Link to stay cold and not burn to death, we have no way to deal damage to Goma. Tulin's Sage ability doesn't actually deal any damage, and he's by far the weakest Sage out of the bunch. And there's just no way that Tulin alone is going to be strong enough to defeat Demon King's army at the end of the game. So I knew we were going to need to get more Sages, and with only one clear option ahead of us, we're heading to the Spirit Temple. If you didn't know, the Spirit Temple is usually a hidden temple that you can only unlock after beating other dungeons, but it's actually possible to do it earlier. The dungeon quest starts in the Floating Dragon Head Eye, behind a locked door. The only way through that door is with 10 heart containers. So the next task was clear. I needed to get a lot of hearts. In the last stream, we waved off auto build because it seemed entirely useless. That might be the furthest thing from the truth. Earlier that day, someone sent me a very specific glitch, ghost stick clipping. At one point, it was used in the any person speedrun to clip through walls, but now it's just one of those glitches that everyone's kind of forgotten about. Here's how it works. Okay, so basically, you get your controller, 
You don't give a shit. It clips you through walls. But burritos, don't you have to kill Copta to get auto build? Nope, we can just leave. And now we can start the spirit temple. Remember how earlier I said we need to get heart containers to open this door? Yeah, that's bullshit now, because we can just clip past it. Perfect. Perfect. The next step in the quest is to take the mask off this pedestal and put it on this pedestal. Then you take it off that pedestal and throw it at this pedestal. Yeah. Finally, take it off that pedestal and put it on this pedestal. Now do that four more times. Holy shit, Nintendo. What were you thinking? How much crack did you smoke? Can I have some? I'm joking, I'm joking. Most of the Spirit Temple teaches you how to use different Zonan devices, but I can't actually activate them. Luckily, I was able to do the classic Ultra Hand Recall God combo, which I'm gonna demonstrate. Imagine this is lava. We gotta get over the lava. We can't jump that, that's too far. Instead, we're gonna Ultra Hand. We're gonna Ultra Hand the object over the lava, and we're gonna bring it back. All right, real quick, while he's running it in, I just wanna say I've been working on a really cool video I'm super excited about, so if you do like this one, please subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and back to you doing whatever you're doing. Hop on and use recall. That made absolutely no sense. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Oh, no. That's long. That's really far up. That's not the kind of thing I can just recall. So this is a fan elevator and you're supposed to just hit the fan so that it goes up. It's not even meant to be a puzzle, but we have no way of activating the fans. How do I turn the fans on? Then I realized you can turn on Zonai devices. You just need another Zonai device. Extra. Oh, steering stick. And there's our solution right there, boys. There we go. Bra moment. <laughs> I plopped all the armor pieces into the pedestals and we unlocked Minoru. Minoru is a big mech that you can fuse items to her arms. So naturally I was wondering, could I fuse items to her arms and not unlock the inventory category? Three, two, one. Oh, guys, that's great news for us. We can fuse items to Minoru. That meant our fusibility wasn't actually useless. And on top of that, we could bring Zona devices around with us around the open world because we could just fuse it to Minoru. Minoru was like an inventory for us. But we still need to defeat the dungeon boss, the seized construct. If the demon came hey, the torch is with us. Pawn, the torch is still it. with us, dude. We can do this together, Link. And with Todd. This boss fight is completely normal. Well, except for the fact that I have way less hearts than you're supposed to, but it was easy. So... Okay, How, dude, well, if he breaks, what am I supposed to do if you break my sh- Wait, what? Dang it, dude, I was- Oh, come on. It's done. Yes. And with that, sit back, relax. We got some cutscenes to watch. That we have recovered my Bro, she's set. about to go into the stick. Oh, God. That scene would have looked so awkward if she kept going. Years from now. Someone will appear with the sword that seals Todd. the darkness. Todd, he's talking about Todd, the guys. With the power to defeat you. Todd. Name. I want to restore the Master Sword and deliver it to Link. Oh, uh, I don't want it, <laughs> Zelda. I don't want it. I'm so sorry to break the news to you, but I just don't care. Oh my god, dude. That actually gave me a minor heart attack. I thought I was picking up an item for a hot second there. Now with two sages on our team and nowhere else to go, it was time to make our way to the end of the game. The finale of this game can be split into three sections. Army, Boss Rush, and Ganondorf. During the army section, you have to fight four phases of different enemies. Bacoblins, Lazalfos, Gibdos, and Moblins. The Gibdos are a problem. Not because they're hard to kill, but because you need fire or lightning to kill them. If you try to deal normal damage to them, they won't take any hits. This is where Minoru comes into play. By fusing a flame emitter or a shock emitter to her arms, we can deal damage to the Gibdos. So we prepared Minoru for the fight and headed into army. Let's just try it. I want to see how brutal this is going to be. You guys got to carry. Oh, dude, Minoru loses her items. And that effectively means that our only way to kill the Gibdos is going to be the torch in my hands. And it didn't work. I'm going to save you from all the bullshit. If you go down there with Minoru and you fuse some shit to her arms, it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. I, I don't know why Nintendo... We need to talk about the fire temple again. Look guys, I know I said it wasn't possible before, but if we could beat it, we could get the fire sage and the sage of fire would burn the shit out of the Gibdos. So I got thinking, what is the only thing in this game that keeps you from burning to death? Water. It's a simple answer really, and it's kind of crazy that it didn't come to me, but we already have an item in the game that can keep Link wet. 
It's called a water hydrant. So I made a plan. By doing the audible cancel glitch on the hydrant, we can keep it hovering and facing towards Link at all times, and we can hit it with Minru to turn it on. Now Link's constantly getting sprayed by water, which should keep him from burning alive. The first part of this dungeon quest is to fight Yunobo in a burning cave, the perfect place to test this. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> also, I wanted to test this on a dirty save first, so if you see me holding items, don't worry. That's not the real save that we're gonna beat it on. Why am I not burning to death? I should die, right? I don't have armor on. What's keeping me alive right now? Okay, well, we need to figure out how I could even- Could I hit him with Minoru? Oh, the hydrant's gone. Look at- look at my auto build. It's not even there. What? Your rocket club broke? Dude, what is going on? Let me tell you exactly what's going on. When Link gets sprayed by the water from the hydrant, he gets an invisible status effect of being wet. When you're wet, you won't burn to death, but Link can only stay wet for 30 to 50 seconds. Okay, it's fine. I thought that might get rid of our water state. Okay. Yunobo's dead. The Yunobo boss fight honestly wasn't bad, so I was feeling optimistic about the fire temple. This was like a trial run to that. Wait, 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 he's only a Hylian steel, he cheated, he cheated, guys, he cheated! Can you not do that? Look, I'm going to explain. I was just waiting for the right moment. Introducing Zlotting. That was not dramatic. Zlotting. Zlotting's actually a combination of two glitches, Zuggling and Fuse Entanglement. Now, you already know Zuggling from the torch. That's the glitch that allows things to traverse through saves. Fuse Entanglement allows you to have an object fused to a shield while not actually being attached. Here's what that looks like. It's just Bluetooth. So if I fuse entangle a hydrant, the game tries to fuse it to my shield, but I interrupt that by switching shields. It's now kind of in both states. It's fused to my shield and it's a physical object. On its own, this glitch is useless to us because in order to actually do it, we need shields. But if we combine it with zuggling, we can zuggle it into our clean save. What does this do? Both the shield and the hydrant entangled to it will be loaded into our clean save. Also, to be clear, the shield is glued to Link's back just like the torch, so it's basically useless. TLDR, you can move a hydrant from a dirty save to a clean save, with the weird side effect that it looks like we're holding a shield, but again, we're not. The reason this is necessary is because the journey to the fire temple is brutal, and there are no hydrants along the way. So in order to get hydrants down there, we'll need to slot them in from a dirty save. The big benefit to this is that when I die, the hydrant doesn't despawn like other Zona devices would. That's because it's still entangled to my Zuggle shield. To keep the hydrant next to me, I would do an audible cancel so that it never leaves my side. Okay, make sure we're wet, make sure we're wet. Okay, we need Minoru. Minoru, Minoru, Minoru. Minoru. Hit it. I'm gonna die. Dude, it's so brutal. The timing's so brutal. If Minoru spawns here, we're gonna be- No, I'm dying of heat already. <sighs> Alright, we'll stop here, we'll stop here, we'll stop here. Build. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <sighs> okay. This is why complicated glitches and split-second glitches bother me, and I usually give up after trying 13 to 15 times. Guys, yeah, we can do this, we can do this. Oh god, please make this. Oh my god, that would have sucked, dude. Let's go! One of these. Try an ABC. Oh my god, dude, that actually gave me a heart attack. Oh my god, please. Okay, I'm gonna burn soon. I'm gonna burn really soon. It's gonna kill me if I don't kill him. Turn it on. Get off. Get off. Oh my god. Dude, within seconds, within seconds. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That didn't help much, but... Holy shit, height, 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 height. height. Come on, where is he, where is he? You know, Bo, you know, Bo, you know, Bo. I'm on fire, you know, Bo, please. Yes! With all the puzzles from the fire temple complete, the only thing standing between us and getting the Sage of Fire is the boss. I feel like the luckiest man on earth right now. The fact that we've 
gotten to the end of the fire temple with no goddamn items, bro. I was feeling ecstatic. I mean, we got to the end of fire temple. The only thing is the boss. How hard could it possibly be? Let me tell you about Goma. Not a joke. Go suck. Goma's like this big crab and to deal damage, you have to shoot Yunobo at his legs and then he falls down. When he's down, you're supposed to use a sword and hit his eye, but we don't have a sword. So I have to resort to Minoru. Let me tell you, you do not want to resort to Minoru because when he goes down, Minoru runs the opposite way. Minoru? Shit, Minoru, you're kind of walking into a bomb, bro. Minoru, you gonna come today? You wanna, you wanna come sometime? Wow, shield, shield. Wow, just leave me, just leave me. Wow, Minoru, real cool, real cool. And when she does get there and you can do damage, she hits for like two, it's so bad. So, I died. Okay. I died. No, I died. no dude. I died. Oh I died. I died. What? I died. I died. So... I died a lot, actually. I'm dead. Fellas, it was time wow. to lock in. Minor's gonna be slow. Okay, this is very good damage. This is the fastest I've ever gotten to this. Have you tried winning? I'm trying that on this attempt, actually. Come on, hit! Yes! That hit, that hit, that hit. I need to get off, I need to get off. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Oh my god, please, please, please. We're alive, we're alive, we're alive. Am I wet, 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 Okay. Should we go for it? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. We are running low on uh, on wetness. Okay, it's on. It's on. Get wet. Get wet. Get wet. Okay, we're wet. We're wet. We're wet. Please hit. Please hit. Yes. In. <laughs> come on. Come on, just hit, just hit. <laughs> Two and hit a shot. Two and hit a shot. <laughs> Let's go, dude. With the fire temple defeated and the last sage joining our party, there's only one place left to go. Listen up. Listen up. I'd like nothing more than to smash the demon king. Allow me to refresh your memory. The whole point of beating the fire temple was to get the Sage of Fire. Now that we have fire damage, we can actually kill Gibdos, so that means we can get through army. That leaves us with Boss Rush and Ganondorf. Boss Rush is all about fighting the bosses you haven't already killed, so for us, that's Muktarok, Queen Gibdo, and Phantom Ganon. The worst of the bunch. But luckily, we don't actually have to fight these guys because Ganon spawns in after we beat army, not Boss Rush. Which is crazy that you coded it like that because that means there's literally just a wall blocking us from Ganon and that's it. I mean, did you really think we weren't gonna clip through that wall seriously nintendo i mean think what were you guys think Shit, hold up hold up hold up hold up ag contact me make a function so that the players don't skip all the bosses Shit, i can do that if player dot skips bosses <coughs> uh let's spawn red wall yep yep that'll do it if only we had some way to clip past it oh yeah Ghost sticks. All right, let's put jokes aside for a second. We can beat army using our sages and we can clip past the boss restore. So that leaves us with our final boss, Ganon. Let's be real. Ganon makes Goma look like a toddler learning how to walk. Oh my. And to make matters a lot worse, he disables our sages, which leaves us with nothing but Todd, our burning torch that never left us from the beginning. Wait, this doesn't deal damage? Okay, the torch won't work. I started racking my brain on every possible idea. First of all, is there anything in the game that we can audible for free? A water global module? Oh, that doesn't do shit. Wait, I can get the earthquake manual to attack him without any weapons. And it's a key item. Okay, it requires the Yiga armor. Shit. How the hell do I make something out of thin air? Oh, amiibos. Uh, of course it's disabled. Well, that leaves us with slotting. Look, slotting's wonderful, but it's got a big downside. You're only able to slot items that you can fuse to your shield. That's important because Ganondorf can break any fusible object in one hit. 
And if Ganon breaks that object, it's over. I'm not even talking about just the Ganon fight. I'm talking about army, Ganon, boss, or skip the whole thing. I have to reload the last save, which is before I fight army. So it seemed like slotting wouldn't work either. I was getting pretty desperate. But then I got a really good idea. What if I clipped out of bounds and fought him from outside of the arena? That way he wouldn't be able to deal damage to me or any objects that I bring in. Or out, I guess. Because we're out of bounds. Anyway, time to test. Wheels, no. Shock emitter, no. Flame emitter, no. Frost emitter, no. Cannon, no. Beam emitter, no. Wait. Holy shit. According to the spreadsheet, it is two damage per second. <laughs> How much health does he have? 7,500. Okay, that's about an hour. <laughs> oh god, and that's assuming I have infinite battery. It's an hour and a half all in. Now there's this one daunting problem left. If I can only slot one item in, and that one item is the beam emitter, how am I going to turn it on? I've always had to either use a steering stick or Minoru. Wet me, wet me, wet me, wet me, wet me. No. I was stumped again. I needed a way to slot two items and nobody knew how. But somebody gave an idea. Alright, so this guy is trying to give instructions for a theoretical way to slot twice if we reload to this save. If it worked, they're both gonna be there. I don't really have much faith in it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Something's actually working. I just want to make sure this turns on. This was the moment I realized this wasn't a dream anymore. This was real, and I had a plan to do it. The first stage of the plan is to go into our dirty save and clip past the boss rush wall and the Ganon arena. Clip through, clip through, clip through. Nice. Okay, now we are in that area that is between out of bounds and inbounds. Okay, this looks like a good spot. Now it's time for the plant. Entangle. Now we drop the shield. I feel fairly confident that all of these are perfectly slotted. We're going back. Time for army. Okay, Minoru is actually really good for this. Minoru is dealing damage. Holy shit, Minoru, I don't want to say that. This is good, Spark. I've taken no damage. Oh my god, he hits like a truck. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Uh, I'm getting off. I'm getting off. I really want to catch one of these enemies on fire and use Todd. Fire, 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 Todd, 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 Todd. Yes! Show him up, show him up, show him up. Oh, the block, the defense, the teamwork, holy shit. No. Army's all about teamwork. It's about letting my sages do all the work for me. Yeah, Tulin. Getting in Minoru would let me deal damage to Bacoblins. Yunubo would let me deal damage to Gibdos. Got him, got him, got him. And Tulin was there as well i just get to watch i just get to watch oh it feels so good man i just get to see the sages doing work everything we've put into it all coming to a close it feels so good it feels wonderful <sighs> all right don't get by muck rock don't get by muck rock just run just run just run we gotta get to this wall and we're gonna do an auto boat cancel steering stick into this wall beautiful we're through boss rush we skip bosses only one place left to go let's freaking do this I will crush any opposition. I will. He says this looking at a naked man holding a torch. Oh, uh, somebody picked up an item. Now, Gandorf can't hit us when we're out of bounds, right? So it should be easy. All we have to do is just get out of bounds. Okay. <laughs> Getting out of bounds is going to be kind of hard, guys. I hear him. Oh my god, the range on that's crazy. The problem is, he just sprints at you. Ganon's really aggressive. Like, no matter where you are in the arena, he'll sprint you down and one-shot you. Okay, here's my plan. I want to have him sprint attack me here. Shit. The other issue is that the glitch I'm using to get out of bounds is frame perfect. So if I miss that window, I'm dead. I don't get any retries. I'm gonna die by the time I try again. I have one shot to get that clip. Get out of here. Please, 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 please. Oh. oh, we got it, we got it, we got it. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. Then I noticed something strange. My sages are in the arena with Ganondorf, which should not be possible. That's so weird. Well, extra damage, I guess. There we go, there we go. If he stays right there, we have all the lasers on him. Since we skipped boss rush, the sages were actually glitched into this fight, and they were dealing more damage than my laser. Oh, we did it. I'd almost forgotten the thrill of That's the thrill of battle. <laughs> You didn't keep me waiting, Tulin. You were actually there with me. Oh no, I'm dead. 
and I have to get that clip three times in a row. Because after every cutscene, it teleports me back into the middle of the arena. The good news is that if I die, my slotted items are still gonna be there, so I don't have to restart everything, just Ganondorf. Unless he destroys my slotted items. Wait, did we lose one of our late- No! It turns out Ganon can still break my Zona devices even through the wall. And since I had no backup lasers, it meant I had to restart from army. So this time I slotted some backups too. It took about an hour to get through army again. Oh. I got back at my spot and started beaming Ganon. Okay, that's phase one done. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. And then my worst nightmare happened again. No, they broke it. Are they even dealing damage? Dude, I feel like they're just getting pummeled. I decided to give the sages a shot. Maybe I didn't need the lasers after all. Oh, she actually got a hit in. Oh my god, she's getting hits in. It was an absolute brawl fest between the phantom Ganons and our sages. They killed one. They killed one. Damage, guys. Come on. One more hit, please. It turns out that last hit is never gonna happen because the game is programmed to force Link to get the final hit. Oh, shit. He's just gotta be the main character. With no other option, I had to try to clip right. back in bounds and use Minoru to smack him. We crashed. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention. Those ghost sticks have like a 25% chance just to crash your game. Nothing you can do about it. And if it crashes, we gotta start back from army. And I was really tired of army. Oh, my God. No. Oh my god. No. What is this attempt? 200. Something like that, bro. On this attempt, I tried putting the items in a safer location. I thought putting it behind the red wall would be a good idea, because that gives me plenty of room to move around. Oh my god, it's so fast. The timing's crazy on it. Testing it right now, the beam doesn't go through. Wait, what? And the beam didn't go through. It's over. I'm so beat. Not yet, you're not. Back to army. Bro, I've been to the Ganon fight like, what, three times now? Making it to Ganon is hard as shit. Getting through Ganon, that's a whole nother story, bro. It's not- oh my god. Oh my god. It's crazy. It's crazy. Can't get worked up. It's just a game. It's just a game. I was getting pretty beat up. Every single time I would get to Ganondorf, my game would either crash or I would lose my items. No. Ah. It's not even my fault. It's not even my fault, bro. So we're going back to army. <laughs> And can you guess what happens next? Just it up. Oh my god, I got it. No! Dude, Ganon was hooping me on that shit. There goes another hour, there goes another hour, there goes another hour. And then I started gaming. My first clip was perfect. I was able to slot in two steering sticks and two lasers. So if he destroys the first one, it's not over. Which he almost did immediately. Oh my god. Can I just say something real quick? Everything that's in red would destroy the Zonite. And then I got to phase two. There we go. Prage didn't chat that we don't crash. Prage, 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 Prage. Things were looking good. I had oh two god. laser machines going into phase two. And we didn't crash this time. Oh my god, please. Yes. Holy shit, bro. Holy shit. This is perfect. And then I made a big mistake. Is that gonna break it? No, I should have moved it. We only have one left. If he breaks this, Jover. With all my eggs in one basket, I just watched that shit wash away. Oh my god. No! So that was it. I didn't have any more steering sticks. The run's dead, right? I thought so too. I realized that Yunobo was missing from the fight, and I went to go looking for him. But I ended up finding something way more useful than Yunobo. Where, where's Yunobo? Is Yunobo dead? Try spawning him up here, I guess. Can't summon him. I don't think I can fix you, Nobo. Oh, I see my auto build there. Oh, <gasps> that has my steering stick. I didn't lose all my steering sticks. I gotta be really careful about this one, though. As I say that, it's f gone. Holy shit, guys. We're guaranteed phase three for the first time. Dude, my heart's pounding. My heart's f pounding. Even though it was like 30 minutes, it felt like five. Okay, we got this. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Please! Dude, my hands are shaking right now. Oh my god. No, that scared the shit out of me. That scared the shit out of me. No! Yeah. No. If you're not sure what you're looking at, it's my items about to get destroyed. All that red stuff, it breaks the Zonai devices. No, dude, there's still two items here. There was really nothing I could have done to save it here. I had to just pray. And they were gone.
Big surprise. For anyone wondering if I could use the sages in this phase, they're all passed out, so I had no choice. It's okay. It's okay. That wasn't the one. That wasn't the one, but it's that's all right. Wasn't I just a heap of joy that night? I think even if I just die, um, I'm just gonna stop stream if I die. This is gonna be my, my last attempt of the night. I'm not gonna be able to stream tomorrow. I'm not gonna be able to stream Thursday. It was late. I was tired, but I had no sanity left. So as the clock hit midnight, I gave myself one last shot. I wasn't taking any chances with this one, so I started grinding Koroks. Why? Because you can only slot the amount of shields you can carry, so more shield slots equals more backups. More backups equals more chances to beat this thing. You get the idea. With this many shield slots, we can slot four laser machines. And it turned out I was gonna need every single one. Also, thanks to Lovely Sirius, he helped make a guide to make sure that Ganondorf gets stuck in the bow loop. Heal attack, climb the wall. This should ensure that he can only use his bow and never break our devices. Let's go back. Got through army. Cool. Got my first clip. And the stash was successful. I wasn't surprised this time. I got pretty good at it. Then my switch almost died on me. Oh my god, I'm at 1%. That's what I get for using a third party dock. There it is, there it is. Rage. Yes. That's a good phase two. Well, guys, in about one minute, we're gonna know whether or not I'm going to beat the game. Holy shit. We're here. All of our sages are fucking gone. Beautiful. Don't, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. One heart left in a dream. Can I pull it off? I thought so, until Gandorf was Gandorf and did his stupid red orb move. It was heading right for my zone of devices. Watching this thing travel felt like an eternity. Those are my last zone of devices. So that's it? No. I got so lucky. If that had traveled for like an inch further, it would have broken everything and the one would have been dead. And the best news is, we just got Ganon in the bow loop. There's not a damn thing he can do to break him now. <laughs> Hello, congrats on the win. Yeah. Firm handshakes, we did it. When I tested this, I had three lasers on him and I, I left legit for like 30 minutes, bro. I took a shower, I got food, I came back just as I was in the cutscene after he died. So you're in here for like an hour, bro. I hope you're ready to stay up for another hour. <laughs> It's 3 in the morning right now. Honestly, I think you turn off your Switch and we play a game of Battleship. Bro, a raw mind? That's crazy. What did, wait, what do you even call that oh, thing? Oh, boys. Hard. We just lost our first laser. Turns out that lasers have a time limit on them. After about 20 minutes, they'll just break. And this is the only laser we have left. It's gonna have to do. Back to we're Battleship. back. Oh, we're back. Okay. I'm not gonna blue ball you. It worked. Yes, dude. Yes. Fucking go! There we are. Naked. With our boy Todd. I actually can't believe we're here, dude. Don't pull the sword. <laughs> oh no, man. We can't do nothing about it. Don't be tempted. It's, it's a hallucination, Link. You didn't give her the sword. Unfortunately, the Master Sword here is a forced pickup, so I can't skip it. But it's not possible for this sword to exist, because remember, we never gave Zelda the Decayed Master Sword. I know that's kind of cheap lore reasoning, and the challenge should be failed, but it's actually not. You'll see why later. It's now the Master Torch. Oh my god, this is perfect. This is perfect. Demon Dragon should be really easy. We just have to wait for this cutscene to finish, and... Why is my game still white? Give it a moment. Give it a moment. It's been a moment. Holy shit, it's done. It's crashed. I don't understand. I'm crushed now. I've never ever seen this before. You know what guys? I think this is it. So that was it. I was ready to give up and close the app. But let me just keep it open for now. After that cutscene, that's when you pick up the Master Sword. And I think it's trying to put it in my inventory without the spot to put it in. Because I've never picked up anything. This is our ending. I think genuinely this is our ending. I'm gonna stop the timer. About 20 minutes go by and I just start clicking buttons on my controller. Whoa. Whoa, 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 what the hell? Hold on a second. What the heck's happened? We are so back. I guess we're beating the game, boys. I guess we're beating the freaking game. 
Dude, just more emotional tension and drama. Sure, dude, sure. So what even happened there? Well, it turns out the first time you pick up a weapon, you get a dialogue box, basically just teaching you how to use it. Normally, you're supposed to get this when you pick up the Decayed Master Sword, but we never picked up the Decayed Master Sword. So we couldn't see it, but that dialogue box was open the whole time. All they had to do was just click B. No, the torch broke. No, the torch broke. Oh my god, if I softlock here, can you imagine? Yeah, there's actually a chance your game can just crash if you die here. Luckily, that didn't happen to me. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, folks and fellas, grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and enjoy the final cutscene with me. Feels so good! Come on, Zelda. Yes! 31, 22, 34. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Remember I told you I didn't actually break the rules? Let me show you why. If I load back the manual save which we beat the game on, the weapons category is actually missing, and we no longer have the Master Sword. Dude, I think that's fair to say that we beat the game without getting an item. Now, if you're still sitting there and you're like, he used key items, he lied in the title, I hate that guy. You're in luck because I'm gonna beat the game this Sunday at 6 p.m. EST with not only no items, but no key items as well. Also, I just finished my series of trying to be every shrine itemless, and that was crazy. So if you don't want to miss that video, make sure to subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And to all my members, Mark, Swinney, CTV, Griffin, Axolotl, thank you guys so much. Genuinely, I'm a full-time college student, and you guys make this a lot easier. So with that being said, that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, to anyone that wants to go out and do this shit again and not get hit at all, You deserve, for anyone that ever can do that, like they are actually not human.